Just about to jump into a sketch demo here. I got a lot of really interesting suggestions for what I should draw this morning. And, well, I got some really interesting ones. Um, I got some that were more common than others, so I thought I'll do something a little bit fun on this one while also at the same time explaining the process of how I develop a sketch with just using pen. So no pencils and erasers on this one. I'm just sort of going to jump in. Bear with me. All right, so the very first thing that I'm going to do is always I'm going to start with a perspective box so that I can kind of grid out what I'm going to do before I even start with silly details and stuff like that. That should seem really, really obvious, but it... Yeah, <laughs> sometimes when I see people draw, they take too big a bite too quickly. Sometimes uh, it's really common for people to start with like the wheels or something like that. And um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just reading some comments as we're going. And that's not a bad place to start, but I don't always find it to be the best place to start either. Because you are making proportions out of, say, starting with wheels or something like that. But at the same time, you should know what your limitations are on the paper that you're sketching. Um, someone's asking, is this a regular style Bic? I mean, it's a round stick grip. Here would be sort of more of a regular Bic. And I'm actually going to use one of each of these while I'm drawing. Reason being, this one I think creates a better line for sketching. This one creates a slightly heavier line for line weighting. So if I can sketch with something a little bit lighter, then I can make up for all the mistakes that I'm going to make because I don't have any room to erase. So... Here I'm just kind of working out my perspective box. This is probably one of my per favorite perspectives to... Uh... <laughs> Someone said, I actually start with a headlight. I'm a weirdo. I mean, do whatever works for you. You know, there's, there's really no wrong answer. But what I do is somewhat formulaic. But if you have the fundamentals, then you can basically draw anything. So I know it'll just seem boring to kind of go, yeah, start with a rectangle, start with a box. But everything is built off of this. If you've got this in its correct layout or whatever perspective you want to draw, if you get the box right, everything after that is simple math and simple perspective. So, for example, I already know exactly how I'm going to shoot the shadow off of this one. This might seem reminiscent of a lot of other drawings that I do because... Well, not only is this my favorite angle, I'm going to draw something that I've drawn a lot. So I'm going to be able to do a lot of it from memory, which is great. Um, not necessarily something that is going to be so keen for everyone as far as drawing from memory. But, uh, but I tend to like to do that uh, just as, as a habit. Because the more I look at something and the more drawings and sketches I do of it, the more I'm going to memorize the lines anyways. Or at least I should be paying attention to those types of details. It'll make it easier for me to do this, you know, on an airplane, in an airport, wherever I'm going that week or that day. So I don't have to have a pile of papers and <laughs> someone says, I want to know what cocaine you're on. It's called coffee. That's all. Really, the reason I'm talking about a million miles an hour is I'm sure you guys have tuned into live videos before where there's just dead silence. Nothing's happening. That's boring as hell. Someone asked, how do you get the right proportions of the car right? Always struggle with that. So, yes, and somebody did guess. It's going to be a 911. So, obviously, all the marks that I'm making here, they're more or less guesses. Again, I've drawn this particular car about a million times, so I'm making good guesses, but I'm not going to be able to erase. So, you're going to see all the mistakes that I'm making at the very same time. So, proportion is a bit of a guessing game. You can get out the rulers, and you can, uh, you can, you can measure uh, your reference if you find a good reference. You can measure by points based on pen, like scaling from your uh, reference photo to your drawing. But I prefer to just kind of go after it and just uh, put lines down until I feel like everything's in the right place. One of the ways that you can get proportions with details right, let's say I just, I started with this rectangle. As long as I draw the car within there, I'm good. So starting with the biggest proportion first, this is how much space the car is going to occupy on the page. And then everything else from there is details within that point. So. Obviously, I haven't drawn the wheel ellipses in yet. That's it's just not my go-to to start that way. So, without further ado, I'll start to put some more of these lines in place, and it'll start to make a little <laughs> bit more sense. So, for example, let's say I've got a general idea of where the windscreen line is going to be, and so we're going to create a little greenhouse here. I'm going to do my rough sketch a little bit darker, hopefully so that you guys can see. And I'll darken it up as I go, but I want to give you guys a better idea of how I'm creating the proportions at the same time. So I've got my main window here to create the greenhouse, and then let's say the rear window is going to be somewhere back here. Well, let's say that 
I know that the split for the rear window is just a little bit up from there and then the ending of the rear glass is a little bit after the end of the cove here. It's looking at different pieces of your reference and knowing what the distance are between the points. I tend to like to sketch so I end up with something a little bit more stylistic but um, yeah, to each your own. And thank you very much. <laughs> so anyways, just gonna start pecking in some area ideas here. Again, just to kind of, I need to get placements generalized so that when I am refining it later as I go, um, I've done all my guesswork and I don't want to do guesswork in the, in the uh, final line weight. I want to do it here, which is why this stage is going to be the messiest part out of anything. And I have an idea for how I want to do something really interesting with this one as a, as a design, as opposed to just redrawing another 911, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's definitely not a Mustang. Uh, it doesn't matter wh where, what kind of customizations I'm going to do. I still need to start with something that's basically correct. At least sort of correct. <laughs> so. And I'm not quite to the part where I'm going to put ellipses in yet. I kind of want to get a flow for the side of the vehicle from this perspective. Um. I actually have a lot of the basics already in place. I could probably get away with some really, really simple modifications from here. But I want to do something a little bit more wild and a little bit more interesting. Just for the sake of doing something different and interesting. I mean, I've drawn 911s and 912s about a bazillion times. And I'm a little bit biased. I kind of like these cars. So, but... We do something different. We're gonna have a little bit more fun. Hovercraft 911 to make it interesting. Yes, that is an interesting idea. That would be interesting. Uh, this is the best part of the drawing, the line sketch. Yes, this is definitely. I've, I found that the cleaner drawings that I do never look as cool as the rough drawings I do. Even if this drawing is terrible, which don't worry, there's gonna be plenty of mistakes. You guys get to see the entire process of how I absolutely hack a drawing to death until I get something good together. But the cleaner versions don't tend to have as much soul as these really wildly just, you know, there's lines everywhere. All right, so what I'm doing here is the tail section. Obviously, I've got like, I don't know, 20 lines here. And I'm kind of being a little bit spastic. Could be the coffee. Who can say for sure? Anyways, I'm trying to get to the point where I decide where the end length of the top part of the body is going to go. Again, it's a car I'm really, really familiar with. So my guessing is hopefully going to be in the ballpark, but I'm still going to make a lot, a lot of guesses. And some of these cut lines, let's say like the drip rail line for this car actually comes off of the top of the window frames. So that line, as it kind of tapers towards the back, changes shape and it gives you an idea of the shape change of the back of the vehicle. Uh, so we get to see how you compose a car with all the arrow kits. Maybe if I was going to do something really, I'm going to do something kind of interesting with this one. I don't know if it'll end up being arrow. I'm going to go kind of a different, different route with this one. But again, I got to start with the basics of the car. Um, because if the car is not right, it doesn't really matter. Like a base stock car. If it's not right, then nothing I'm going to do afterwards is really going to be worth anything. So I want to make sure I've got the car corner pivoting in the right area. And here's where I might start to consider where I want to put in the wheels and kind of get these fender arches in the right place. I'm doing a bit of guessing. That's kind of the issue of these things. The guesswork is kind of the fun part. Sometimes this can be the hardest part of a drawing is just getting the structure going. Um, and some of them are easier than others, that's for sure. I like to work in these really, really weird perspectives because there's very few photo references for stuff like this. I mean, these days you can get drone shots, but, um, but I like these weird perspectives because I have to draw them from scratch, which means whoever's getting them or whatever project I'm doing, they're automatically getting something way more interesting than you could if you just traced a photo. Yeah, I just happen to like that. But that doesn't mean that everybody has to commit to my very strange rules. It's just a thing that I like <laughs> making an off-road 911. I'm going to do something interesting with this one now that I've kind of got an idea of where the wheels might land. I'm just going to sketch them in real lightly for where I think they might go in general. I'm probably going to go just a little bit oversized for the same. Um, anyways, somebody was trying to call me while I was going live. What were you thinking? All right, so carrying on. So I'm just sketching in the ellipses real, real quick, real light. And just so I have a general placement of where they might be towards the end. If this were a little bit more of a stock or a narrow body, they might stay there, but 
Um, I'm going to move things out a little bit on this, so I'm going to guess just a little bit better. You know, this is kind of the point of starting with something that's sort of stock, so that as you're making modifications, the you can build off of an existing platform rather than... You can modify just from the start, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you've got like perfect references, but in the case of something like this, you know, I'm I'm going to be doing a lot of guessing for the for the sake of what I'm doing here. So I just want to do good guessings is all. All right, and I'm just making some basic lines here just to kind of give myself some idea where some of these details might land. I don't 100% know for sure, um, but that's why we sketch things. All right, so it'll be pretty easy to get uh, ellipses messed up in this part of the process, too. And I kind of want to extend the back off a little bit here while I'm working. Again, for the sake of what I think I'm going to be doing, I need to shallow up these ellipses just a little bit so they're not too weird. I want to turn this one in just a little bit, too, because that will look a lot more interesting. And make sure that shadow carries off of the back tire. I'm doing a lot of guessing here, but that's the nature of the thing. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Ern Bangs asked, did you go to school for these? I did not. I just uh, learned by practicing. And practicing is about, it's the least interesting answer you could possibly have for how to get good at anything, but is the most honest answer to pretty much everything. So, nope, did not go to school. Didn't go to college, didn't go to art school or anything like that. I just enjoy doing this, and I have ever since I was a kid, so um, eventually I made a job out of it, which is pretty cool. So I'm trying to shape up some of the placements and proportions now that I kind of have an idea for how some of this might plant. Um, I need to adjust a little bit more of the car around it. True of when you're building and designing a custom car, as soon as you start making changes to one area of the car, it will start to reflect in other areas of the car. You can probably think about cars that you've seen that are overchopped or something like that, or then the, then the rest of the car doesn't look right. It's just nature of the thing. You have to balance the entire thing as you go. <laughs> Someone said, I miss these live telecasts. I used to do these a lot more frequently, um, but yeah, the last year changed a lot of things for a lot of people, so we just kind of and the ebb and flow with the life just changes. How long have you been drawing? I've been drawing ever since I was a kid. So I started doing uh, vehicle drawing commissions. Actually, the first one that I ever got paid to do was when I was in middle school. Um, and I've never really been bad at it, but I've certainly gotten better at it, that's for sure. All right, now I've got some really pretty wonky sketch proportions in here. At least I kind of know the basis of what I'm after. Now I can start to plant in the ideas that I really want. I hate people say I was born with a talent to draw. That's really wrong. We were born with a de desire, but the ability is repetition. From Philip Bank 777 I agree. You have to practice. I don't. I think it's weird people think that they're just going to be born with something and, and you're either good at it or not. I mean, some people are probably predisposed to be good at certain things than others. I can't say that's the case for me at all. But in any case, there was no shortcut for practice. You have to practice. <laughs> Hi, I'm an anesthesiologist. Started giving more time to my art looking at your post. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Hey, thank you very much, Doc Parthe. Yeah, sorry, I hacked that up. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Christopher Hovden said you should have a YouTube channel. I actually do. I have longer format stuff on YouTube. And the reason I haven't been posting there is a lot like the reason I haven't been posting long format stuff here. Because life got busy with uh, other stuff. And doing these types of videos and long format demos is kind of a full-time job all on its own. So, and while art and design is what I do for a living, uh, coming up with a, a video structure, video, filming and editing is its own full-time job. That is for sure. All right, so I'm just kind of putting some body contour in here so I can start to understand what I'm after. Next, I'm going to plan out the next weird thing that I'm going to do. Oh, the real Bryce Dickerson says, yes, absolutely. There's so much hard work that goes into this. You're absolutely right. And he, you know, again, just can't shortcut practice. All right, so now that I've got a long, this to me is like long court contour line to split up the middle of the car. The next thing I'm going to do is start to put in uh, kind of the weird stuff that I thought I might be after for the design. 
So I was thinking kind of like mid-engine swap, something a little bit more interesting that actually comes out of the back of the car. So I didn't waste a whole lot of time putting basic references in the back of the car because I just needed to know where the shapes end so that I could draw something engine-like right in the middle here. And again, this is all going to be built off of really, really basic perspective. Someone asked, how many hours per day? I guess if you mean drawing or practicing, I do a practice drawing like this almost every single morning, and this is what I do for a living. So this is, whether I'm practicing or doing actual work, this is, this is what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just starting to use the basic perspectives that I have here to start to plot out what I think might work, say, motor-wise. I'm gonna start with some generic shapes, and then I'm gonna kind of build into something more interesting. If you start too detailed from the beginning, you could draw yourself into a corner really, really quick, especially with this many, um, <laughs> these types of lines. Uh, because later when you're doing line, line weights, you need to decide what you're keeping and what you're getting rid of. So again, just kind of putting in some generic shapes here. Just my experience of rear to mid engine things. And I am doing everything in kind of a blocky format. And that's just kind of nature of just drawing basics in perspective. Um, this Porsche, one of your favorite cars, I've seen you draw them a lot. It is. I own one, so I happen to really enjoy them. Um, someone said, eat, bye-bye, good luck with the car. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming by. Uh, I'd love to see you draw of Cobra 427. I saw that as one of the suggestions um, that I got for this video. And I thought about that um, because I wanted to do something in this up high perspective. But I didn't... Uh, <laughs> I got more requests for Porsche than anything else, so I thought, well, we'll meet somewhere in the middle. We'll do Porsche, but we'll do something wild. So in my mind, I'm sort of imagining maybe, maybe something open-wheeled in the back, or you know, maybe where we have kind of a, a hover landing like a 917. I'll come across the back here. A lot of this will make sense as I'm putting line weights in, so all you're hearing me do is guess. Um, but that, when you're drawing from scratch, that's pretty much what you're doing. You're just making, hopefully, better guesses. So, let's see, we want to make sure that our arches somewhat line up so the perspective isn't too weird here. And then, yeah, maybe we'll create a fender flow that goes this way off of the back so that this area is open. And you might be surprised to find out that the way that I'm talking out loud right now is exactly how I talk out loud even when I'm here by myself just drawing. It can be a little too quiet in here sometimes. Just, uh, just hearing myself talk out loud about ideas while I'm drawing, sometimes I'll find myself talking myself out of ideas at the same time. I know that sounds really, really strange, but it just kind of is what it is. All right, so let's see. Again, we're just kind of guessing on some of these things. I kind of like this long waterfall look for the 911 line from the back window to where the drip rail would be. Just kind of want to keep those parts there. So I might end up with something more, let's see if I can just sketch this in and it'll make a little bit more sense. Like a back window area like that, a little bit more like a, a 355 Ferrari or a, uh, an MR2 is a good example. We have this flat glass back here, um, or even a 69 charger, and then you get these long sail panels, like flying buttresses. Um, Porsche's love man, his design has not changed a lot and keeps the integrity of its design language. I'm a huge fan of the design. Very, very cool. Porsche is like, is more evolution than anything, um, which is interesting in some ways, obnoxious in other ways, um, but it's pretty cool. I like that they've kind of stuck to their guns. I didn't really appreciate it until I had one, and now it sort of makes sense. All right, so again, I'm just kind of guessing on a lot of this stuff. I've decided I want to keep this this plane here because I want to do something a little bit more dramatic and interesting, and maybe I'll uh, cut out really skinny tail lights out of the body so that I get something a little bit more dramatic. And I could probably, if I had more, <laughs> I'm you know, like using this entire uh, stretch of um, of paper, so I don't have a ton of room, but. In my mind, it would actually probably be better if there was a wing here. So I'll just go ahead and sketch that in perspective, and I'll see if I can keep it. Um, I have a tendency of drawing straight off the page in either direction. 
Um, even though I create this perspective grid as a way to kind of manage the space that I'm using, it doesn't mean that I don't end up taking in the entire space. I like using a full sheet, even though in the case of something like these guys will make my life a little bit harder, but hey, life is just challenges, right? So I'm going to sketch this guy in place just because I like the idea of having something here just to give the car a little bit more of a formula indie look as I go. How long does it usually take for you to sketch a car? It depends on the car and the view. If it's an angle like this, that's a little bit more challenging. If I'm not talking, <laughs> I could usually get through something like this in 15 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on where I'm at and again, how much talking I'm doing. But, um, and some of the more complex ones will obviously take a whole lot longer. And this is a rough sketch. So this is not necessarily indicative of how good something can be. We're having fun here putting an idea down, you know? It's happy little trees, happy little spoilers, all that jazz. So we're just, we're just having some fun here. Uh, but if I was going to do, like, to give a better example, a more realistic example, when I'm doing something that's uh, client-oriented or rendered, I'm going to take a lot more time. I'm going to slow down and be a lot more precise um, because <laughs> somebody is taking time to spend a little bit more time. So that just is what it is. All right, I think we're going to take and probably follow the shape a little bit on the roof. I'd sketch something similar. Guys, Whew. all right. <laughs> all right, getting back to it. Sorry, my connection here is going in and out quite a lot. So, someone was asking, when is the giveaway? And that is a fantastic question because we had uh, planned on doing an 80k giveaway at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. What I wasn't expecting is the new format of content that we're sharing, like made the, our numbers go up really, really quick, which is awesome. So we're almost at 91,000 now, just in this really short amount of time. So we're reorienting a giveaway to do something, um, hopefully a little bit bigger because we're approaching bigger numbers a lot faster. So I haven't, we haven't figured out if we're going to hold out to do more of, um, of a hundred K giveaway and just do something bigger or we'll split it up a little bit. But it is something I was, I'm looking forward to doing. We're also in the process of moving to a new space right now. So that'll probably hold up the way that we do some things. All right, now I'm kind of thinking we do something like a McLaren F1 where we get the intake to come over the roof a little bit and drop straight into the back of the motor. And again, I'm just kind of making all these guesses, trying to keep this fun and interesting. And that's sort of the point of these types of sketches anyways. We just want to kind of have some fun here. And thanks, man. I appreciate it. That's crazy. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Always have a hard time getting the wheels to look good. The proportions and spacing for the spokes. How do you do it? Um, we'll get there with this stage. This perspective doesn't have a ton of wheel in it. I mean, obviously, you'll be able to see the, um, the ellipses, the basic ellipses for the tires. Wheels are slightly different. Wheels are just like basic perspective. They're just math and they're skewed by perspective. So you have to take into account a little bit more depth. And, uh, and that's, it's really not that complex when you break it down in the same way as you would with perspective anyways. So it's just another thing, but we'll get there on this one. I'm just kind of trying to peck through this and well, things how, let's see. I kind of want to have some suspension stuff coming off of here but we won't end up with a lot of engine stuff there. So we're gonna, we're gonna end up kind of doing some generic looking engine stuff in here just to kind of fill the space a little bit. Have you ever thought about drawing cars Lego style? I have not. I can honestly say there has never been a time where I thought I wanted to draw something in Lego style. Not that it's a bad idea, but I've never thought about doing that. All right, and then we'll probably end up with some support panel or bar is going that way and let's see we'll probably want to do something really cool and wild with the exhaust so let me see if I can just kind of sketch some ellipses in place and guess I'm trying to guess a little bit faster <laughs> greetings from Chile what's up 
Oh God, he's just using a regular Bic pen. Yes, can, can you tell how, how just scratchy this whole thing looks? All right, we're just gonna pick in some basic exhaust idea. While I'm drawing stuff in this perspective, I almost always wanna create lines going across, not because I think they look good, but so I can keep some of these ellipses lined up um, and not get too skewed in the process. Cause it can happen, especially as quickly as I'm trying to get through this. Um, it can happen. Get some exhaust manifolds in there. And I think that will probably suit us for this basic amount of stuff that we're gonna sketch in to where I can get into the line weights. So yeah, we're actually pretty good right here, I think. I mean, I'm, don't forget me wrong. There's about a million mistakes right here. But we're gonna clean that up as we go and you'll see that. Have you ever drawn a 66 GTO convertible? I don't know that there's really many cars left that I haven't drawn, to be perfectly honest. I have people ask me all the time, have you ever drawn a? There, the list is getting smaller all the time. Um, so to answer the question of that, yes, I have. Uh, but um, doesn't mean recently and, um, and in actuality, even though I'm generally posting new artwork every day, at least Monday through Friday, I'm usually doing two to five different things every single day. I just post one. As a matter of fact, most of the time, the stuff that I post is just for the sake of posting. It's not even what I'm working on that day. It's just for fun. All right, so now that I've made a lot of scratchy noise all over this place, uh, we're gonna wait to concern ourselves with certain types of details until, put a little slide window in there. Maybe we'll end up with a vent there. And the quicker and kind of more loosely that you work with these more expressive strokes and the lighter you work, you might be able to tell I'm dragging my pinky. God. Um, sorry. <laughs> Someone said, thanks for the quick answer, Chris. Appreciate it. True. Perspective mainly shows just the wheel lips. Can't wait to see the end for this. All right. Sorry, the surface is going in and out. Killing me, man. Uh, but what I was saying was, you might notice that I'm drawing, basically have my pinky on the surface and I'm just... I just kind of have my hands locked in this way to where I'm just barely making passes with a pen. You can sketch really, really lightly with pen. I think the mistake people make is they get too heavy too soon and then you're stuck with all those mistakes so early on. Will this be saved to watch again later? Yes, I think this should end up as a, uh, as a video post so you can go back, watch, and point out all the mistakes I'm making at your leisure. Don't worry, somebody always does. All right, so... <laughs> All right, actually, you kind of get everything in a great place here. I just have a couple of lines that I want to make sure I've got mostly sorted. And then we can start rocking on. Actually, the next detail for this guy will actually be the, um, the wheels. But I have something so deep here, as you can see, that we're not really going to end up... We're actually not going to end up with any spokes on the rear there. And we're not going to end up with a ton here. I went pretty dramatic on the um, the front ellipse, but I like uh, C10 Dougie says, "Hey from Scotland, hey from Southern California." <laughs> Real Bryce Dickerson, yeah, that's what I love about ballpoint pen too. It's really versatile. This is great. And when you travel, just to take one thing with you is great. Um, taking pencils and erasers, I just I find pencil sketches, at least for me, to be a little bit messy. I, that doesn't mean that I don't sketch in pencil. There are absolutely instances where I do. I just prefer not to. All right. I, obviously, I did do something a little bit, you know, extreme on the uh, front wheel there. But this whole perspective, everything that I'm drawing, this is all extreme. So this is all for the sake of, like, visual impact. We want to sketch an idea that's cool that you read the essence of that inspires what might become a real build later. What do you use more often to color airbrush or just markers? Both. About 50-50, I would say. We might base out with marker and then clean everything up with airbrush. And then tons of paint details after that. There's like no super simple answer for that. But without further ado, I'm going to jump into the line weight so we can start to see where this really wonky sketch will start to become a more refined sketch. Someone says, no mistakes, just talent. Haven't seen all your car. Uh, have y'all seen his sharp yard? Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm going to start line weighting. I'm actually going to start with the same pen that I already have. Um, I did mention earlier that I have another one here that I can do, that I can use. A, this is a little bit more of a standard Bic, and I might use towards the end. But just right now, I'm just going to go ahead and use this one so I can start to close off these areas with a little bit more permanency. And then we can start to develop the edges. Um, any Tesla sketches that I missed... Actually, I did do a Tesla sketch, uh, probably been four or five years, 
But yeah, I did a concept a long time ago um, what a Tesla Model S would have been like as a two-door coupe. All right, so now that I've got everything kind of gridded and mapped out, I have a sense in my mind of what's right and what's wrong here. So I'm essentially using the line weights to highlight and bolden what I think is correct. Um, or my guess as to what's correct. Is it? It's all a matter of perspective, right? See what I did there? And I'm basically just making multiple passes in the, in the areas and just allowing the line weights to kind of guide the whole thing. The longer and more fluid the motions are, um, the, it just adds a little bit more, it's a, it just gets a little bit more dynamic. You get this nice flow to things. It's more or less called drawing through. You want your lines to go through the process, not end at a certain point. Um, how do you draw lights and shadow lines into a car? That'd be an interesting one to explore and something where I'm actually doing a rendering. Um, somebody asked, what did you study? I never went to college or art school or design school or, or anything like that. So I didn't study anything. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I wasn't practicing. I've always, always drawn. It's a, something I was did a lot as a kid and just got more serious about as an adult, that's all. But everybody's journey is different. Some people really prefer the go to school method. It just definitely was not for me. And anybody that went to school with me in, in high school will know that I was not the greatest student anyways. Just not my preferred way of learning. Oh wait, wheels tattoo, someone said. Uh, do you collect Hot Wheels? I do indeed. All right, so go ahead and bold up some more of this stuff where I think the intake might flow over this. And even if this is, ends up being a horrific idea for whatever reason, which is just as likely, I'll be honest, at least, you know, I might find stuff that I want to keep in the idea or things that, uh, you know, if I wanted to redraw this, I could come up with some alternative ways to accomplish the same thing or whatever that might be. But that's the whole point of doing these types of sketches is to, it's the design process that are, helps you arrive at the ideas. If I knew exactly what I was going to do when I started, that's hardly very interesting. All right, jamming right along. Uh, I'm stuck at shading and give shadow to drawings. Any tips on that? That was definitely something we're about to discuss in a different video. So you're sponsored by Hot Wheels. Not even close. Someone said, uh, awesome work, Chris. Thank you. All right, so picking up on some of the heavier line details here. Again, we're basically just shoring up all the things that I know I want to keep. I could break out uh, French curves or ship's curves or ellipses at this stage to really make these lines perfect. But to me, that sort of defeats the, um, the purpose of this type of drawing. As soon as it starts to become really clean and really accurate, you also sort of lose the soul of the ideas. You're kind of jumping too many steps ahead. Let this kind of be the fast, messy one, and then build from there. Advice for beginners in drawing. I know it's not an attractive answer, but practice like crazy. Um, and yeah, I know it doesn't sound fun either. I think uh, practice is fun, but I still practice every single day. For me, what I'm doing today, this is what I'm gonna consider practice. So that is definitely the advice that nobody really wants to hear, but it didn't get anywhere without practicing, that's for sure. But make sure you're practicing stuff you enjoy too. Um, and if you don't really enjoy practice, that is a separate problem, honestly, unfortunately. You really wanna, wanna learn to like practice and be really, get really comfortable with making mistakes. All right, so I'm just shearing up some of these shut lines here because even though they're not like a critical part of detail, um, they kind of give a shape and flow of the car. You've got to have cut lines. Do you do any digital illustration? And somebody right after that said, do you do any Photoshop work? I do. I actually, I do a lot more digital work than it probably seems, and I love working in that format. More often than not, the digital renderings that I do will still start like this, a sketch on paper, and I'll take a photo of this and I'll render straight over it digitally. And there's a lot of reasons and a lot of benefits to work that way. Um, as fun as it is to draw with markers and airbrush, 
when I'm traveling out at a shop. It's not really the smartest thing for me to be getting on a plane with a few hundred markers, um, airbrush and paints. I've had stuff like that confiscated at TSA before, and it's not super fun because none of those um, none of those materials are particularly cheap. So uh, yeah, being able to travel light is absolutely amazing. So I love working digital, taking a drawing tablet with me. Really, really simplifies things. Um, and honestly, it's it's 2021. There's a lot of merit in being able to do some really cool stuff with markers and airbrush, but it's really important to kind of stay up to date with the, the tools and technology we have on hand too. You don't want to fall behind the times. There is something really cool about being able to do all this traditionally, but in the real world, see the builders, um, manufacturers that I work with, it's not that critical uh, what the final format is. It turns out really nobody cares. Sometimes people want to buy a piece of artwork, and sometimes people <laughs> just want you to get the job done. And that's probably my favorite part about digital is you get there a lot, I don't want to say faster, but you give yourself the room to work a lot better, I think, as long as you're comfortable with the tools. Um, the proportions are recognizable at Porsche. That is correct. Well, I am doing something sort of wild with this one. I've got, um, I want to say I'm working with two or three different builders right now who are uh, working on custom Porsches with, which is awesome. Uh, so I've been drawing a lot of these and of course staring at them outside my window. And a lot of my friends have air colds. Are you gonna post this to the page when you are done? I sure am. Um, that way you guys can go back and, and watch and kind of see a little bit of what I was doing here. Again, not all this is, is accurate. And I might even take the time to do a, um, a follow-up version as well. What I was just about to say was, before my service cut out, is you guys will notice that I'm uh, rotating the page a lot. And the reason for that is depending on which hand you draw, you're going to have a natural tendency to want to arc your hand a certain way. Um, this will be for sale. Yes, absolutely. But, so the point of me rotating is so let's say you're trying to get into this curve here. Well, this is a bad example. This curve here is a better example. If you see the way your wrist would have to be oriented in order to get this right, you're going to make more mistakes that way. Just rotate it and make the sketch in the natural direction that you want to go. So let's say going this way is your natural way. Just keep rotating the paper for every single line that you want to do that way until you get them done. Rather than bending and breaking your wrist to try to do something that doesn't feel natural, your hand will be covering up what you're doing, so you'll be blocking it. You won't be able to see what you're doing, and so you can't error correct. So just rotate the page as you go. That's kind of what I like about drawing small on those little uh, 3 by 5s is as you go, you just rotate it as you go, and you make all the lines in the correct uh, perspective that way. Because if you're arcing this way as naturally, then you want these to be arced the other way in order to get you in the correct perspective. Because if everything is arced this way, then you'll end up with this warped, bubbly look. So you want to counter that. You want the bubble to go, you want this arc this way and this arc this way. And then something close to the center in the middle. And that'll give you a nice warped perspective anyways. But if you draw everything with the same draw through, then you'll end up with just a bent looking vehicle, which is really not attractive. Uh, nice tip. This is a Porsche. If you're drawing a car, does it help to break it down into 3D shapes and then make some lines connect to start where you're drawing? That's a really good question. That's in a format of what I had done here. Start with really basic blocks um, to me, or shapes rather. So an ellipse is still a basic shape. You could also break these down into blocks as well um, because ellipse perspective falls into a square. So I always start with simple shapes and build up from there because I know, let's say I get the perspective wrong really, really early on, I know not to waste any more time on this drawing, start over on something else. So rather than getting really nitty gritty into the details too quick, this way, um, if, I, if I don't have a good start, I can just start fresh and take what I learned on a bad drawing and take it over to the next one. So that's where I would absolutely prefer to just start with, um, start with simple shapes and break them down. Yeah, we're going to start to work this little intake area in here. This is a little bit more uh, McLaren F1 inspired, but that's all right. There's no rules about what we can include or not include. And then I kind of want this waterfall, or it's actually really more of a flying buttress. This is a really unusual thing to do with a 911, but hey, we're here to have some fun, man. 
Good job. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to wrap these pillars around as well. And again, I'm going to rotate the page so that I'm doing these arcs in the most natural way. This is also something that saves a ton of time. If, uh, if any of you guys out there do a lot of digital drawing, it's the same type of thing. I found that rotating the image on, uh, on the tablet or on my computer screen absolutely helps make uh, drawing digitally a little bit more natural because then you're not stuck drawing in one direction all the time to make all these really interesting unique lines. All right, let's see what I'm asking. Draw, <laughs> I can draw a stick car. You rock, bud. Thank you so much. It's a classic Porsche. Yes, all the classic Porsche details. I'm, I'm going a little bit weird with some of the details here, but again, we're going to have some fun. So I like the idea of kind of this waterfall looking uh, piece of glass in the back here that kind of separates what would this, what would this look like a proper big engine in the back. Do you race the Beetle? I would say... I mean, I don't race on a racetrack, and that's the answer I'm going to leave it with. <laughs> All right, so continuing the perspective of the intake I've got drawn up here so that it feels like it's grounded in reality. And of course, we're going to start to vary line weights here, too. I have the largest line weights basically capture the big part of the vehicle. I've seen... Um, First time doing a live video with this particular phone. It's doing great. Uh, will we get a render process as well? Maybe later, probably not in this exact video because I want this to stay about the rough sketching process, but maybe later as a, as a pickup from this one. Uh, but what I was getting ready to say was the line weights I'm gonna start to vary a little bit. And because you need, these bold line weights essentially create structure out of the entire uh, sketch. So we have a rough sketch and now we're starting to tighten, I don't say tighten it up exactly, but we're starting to create real structure around all the looseness that started with. But some of the, let's say these cut lines for the door jam or around here at the edge of the hood, those need to stay really, really skinny because we don't want them to be bold and accentuate anything because they're not, they're important to show the shape change of the vehicle, but they don't, I mean, the, <laughs> sorry, I'm kind of stuttering all over how to explain this. If you make really wide cut lines, it basically looks like whoever built the car didn't gap the panels correctly. Um, and it's hardly a compliment. <laughs> you should do more lives. This is awesome. I used to do these at least once a week. And what I found was that people got less interested over time. And I think anything like that is true. The more you do something, the more people just don't want to tune in. Um, hopefully what I'm doing now is a little bit more interesting than maybe what I was doing then. Maybe that's just the case. I was less interesting or I didn't have enough coffee in those times. Who can really say for sure? So, but it was something that I used to really enjoy doing a lot. The way that we do them here is <laughs> requires a lot of setup and a lot of time. The waterfall resembles a Veyron. Good observation. You are correct. All right, so obviously I've got a bunch of engine detail that I'm going to get into here, and I'm, believe me, I'm nowhere near done. I'm just kind of keeping some of these details as loose as they can be so that I'm not overstuck with ideas. Darken that up a little bit since it's a, since it goes under the vehicle. The lamp, no Porsche, the Chevy Bel Air lamp. <laughs> All right. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to bolt up the spoiler area. I'm actually going to create a little bit of a step in it while I'm going. And this is a shape that goes over the main shape, so I want it to be a little bit bolder. And all this engine detail in here, obviously I'm going to wait to do until I've got the spoiler in place because obviously the spoiler is going to cover up so much of the detail there. Um, I'd go to an art gallery event to check out your work ever, uh, ever done one. Yes, actually, I used to work with an art gallery not far from here. Obviously, COVID times have certainly changed things a bit. Um, and I'm hoping that in our new place, we'll be able to do events right there since it's a bit more of a garage shop setup. All right. So, we've obviously got some of my draw-through lines there, but that's okay. This already looks better with a spoiler on it. Please do show us some basic shading on this sketch. We'll see, I'll see how it goes time-wise. Um, because I do have to do some work today. 
but I'm really, really enjoying this sketch. This is this is super cool, and I can already tell that this would make a really cool rendering, even just as an idea of kind of a supercar layout, mid-engine. I mean, it's sort of mid. It's like mid-rear, I guess. Um, yes. All right, so let's see. Get a little stanchions in there. And because of the nature of the way that lines up, that's basically covered. So we're going to plug in some, hope the new place has room for me and tons of coffee. Oh, yeah, it has a lot more space. And of course, the best part is always the coffee. All right, so I'm going to get in some of these um, finished engine details first, or at least finished. I'm going to try and plot some of this stuff out. It's a lot of guesswork. Uh, especially for something like this, because I'm going from memory. You know, I have no idea what it what it's supposed to be based off of or what it's after, and that's okay. There's a part of me that, that likes that better. That means we're not stuck with any rules. And concept artwork isn't meant to play it safe. We're supposed to see what the possibilities are. You know, based on somebody's... Thank you. Uh, without rear fender, yes. I'm going to leave this entire rear area open. It's kind of like a modern... I mean, this isn't exactly modern, but a modern build style of these types of cars start to get really, really wild. And the more I see of them, the more I really, really like the idea. Um, I always have friends sending me really, really cool Volkswagen Bug and 911 ideas. So something like this probably isn't even outside the realm of stuff that's been done. I just, yeah, I just like this. Um, and uh, like the Roadster I have is naturally fenderless. And I love the way that that looks. I think cars, especially something like this, should have some type of fender. Uh, but the unexposed rear is more like a, a old Porsche race car, like a 917 or something like that. So, let's see, got a little gearbox hang over here. You know, essentially just putting in some false details and more or less noise, but again, gives us the idea of what we're after. Maybe a rain light. Sorry, make sure I'm in frame there. Hey, thank you very much, Hooligan Sketch, and Ferrari underscore Vitor03, thank you. So, moving right along here, just kind of want to make sure I'm integrating these shapes in sort of an organic way. If, if I was going to work with a builder on something like this, we'd have to play a lot with the practicality of pieces and parts. But again, we don't necessarily want to be hung up by the basis of reality to start with. Being stuck inside what's possible is a box. Think outside of that box. Just gonna get the sketch this exhaust placement in here real quick, and then we'll move on to the wheel ellipses, which will define a lot more of the shape um, of these final pieces, anyways. And I can still bolo, uh, bold up a lot more of this. <laughs> Successful quirks, follow me. Um, and I still might as I go, it'll depend a little bit. On, you know, I'll switch pans and we'll, we'll get on to uh, get on to that. Maybe something a little bit more like a, a Ferrari V8 back here. It gives us something a little bit more interesting to work with. And certainly a better sound. All right, jamming right along. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work these ellipse areas a little bit. I mean, I'm always kind of back and forth pecking on little pieces and parts. Should probably get a door handle in here. Got to figure out how to get into these cars, right? Easy peasy. All right. So yes, I want to make sure that this trails off the back here really, really nicely. And so the ellipses is also a great way to take advantage of rotating the page so that you're not stuck with a flat spot or something like that. By the way, sir, which is your favorite pen to sketch? I really like these. This is a Bic round stick grip, and then this is just a normal Bic. The difference between the pens tends to be um, tip size. You can get them in medium, fine, and bold. So it kind of depends on what you're doing a bit. But uh, there's a lot of ballpoint pens out there. They are not created equally. And it got really quiet all of a sudden. All right, I'll just keep on talking. All right, so next we're going to move on to the ellipses. And what I want to make sure is I more or less got these kind of 
in a perspective that makes sense. We can get away with a little bit here, but at the same time, you know, we don't want to we don't want to get too carried away. All right, so because this is more of a wide tire rear vehicle, we're going to end up with a couple of different types of steps in the tire itself. The tire ellipses and the wheel ellipses aren't necessarily the same, which is where working freehand kind of gives us a little bit more room to play here because we need some tire to come under the wheel. And again, of course, just sketching this out as we go so that we kind of get a feel for it before we decide what to bold up, what we're going to keep. And then something similar on the front here. Looks awesome. Thank you so much. Don't miss out the side mirror too. Psh, don't need side mirrors. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. I don't even... Uh, my Roadster only has one mirror, and it's pretty useless anyways. Just just look over your shoulder. I mean, this is probably a little bit harder to see out of. Maybe it'll have something more complex as the McLaren F1 does. Uh, or more like a, an old Countach, actually. It has a, a really interesting periscope type of mirror. Alright, so let's start with this rear ellipse here. Sorry, I'll try to make sure we're still in frame. And again, I'm flipping the page so that my hand can arc the way it naturally would. And one of the ways to kind of get away with fudging ellipses in, the, in these rough sketches without using any tools is not making the ellipse a complete line. So just using the line weight to give the flow and the impression without necessarily doing one solid line. Because it's that solid line that's going to draw your eye towards all the mistakes. And believe me, there's plenty of mistakes here. But uh, in any case... We just want little pieces and parts to imply parts of the um, parts of the ellipse. And of course, we'll go a little bit bolder on the edges here. And of course, the bold edges are, of course, where I'm making up for mistakes that I'm making as well. So, eh, this is what it is. This is what the process is really like. So, all stuff that can be corrected in a, in a later part, you know, if I wanted to do like a, a clean sketch later or something like that. And then from here, let's see, we know our, yeah, so we kind of want to line up our shadow lines here so that we're, like, this is where I'm imagining the cast shadow area for high contrast. So this is all lit. And of course, I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing there more or less follows the same type of contour here. And maybe we'll get a little bit of bubble out from the wing there. But really harsh cast shadows also give this really cool dynamic in a sketch as well. All right. So bolt this up a little bit more now that we know what we're keeping in that sense. And then I'll catch the front wheel up a little bit. And then maybe we'll bolt up a couple other lines, but we'll, we're about there, which is cool. I'm jamming. Again, we just want to line weight certain areas as we go. We don't necessarily want to make a full, complete ellipse. And of course, in the case of something like this, where I went a little bit extreme with my front tire there, you know, it'll make good visual impact for the sake of sketch. But yeah, you know, if I was going to do something as a bit more of a proper final, I'd make sure that everything kind of lands where it should. But I like something that's a little bit extra pushed, even if it's not realistic, because it's far more interesting. Which pens are you using? I'm using a Vic round stick. Hi, friend. Cash kills. What's up? Who the gun sketch says practice makes perfect. Practice makes you make even cooler mistakes, hopefully, maybe, I don't know, I make a lot of them, but we'll see. All right, so now that we've got our wheel ellipses in place, we can start to do all the things that might feel wheel-like. So I already know that we won't have enough space to put the uh, details into, like, spokes into this rear design, but we do want a little bit of ellipse in here to show depth, otherwise it just looks like a hollow... Uh, hollow area and that's that doesn't look good either so yeah we just want a little bit in there to show that there's something happening and but our front wheel we actually have a little bit more space to do something so I'll do something really really rough because I have in mind what I would do 
if I was making a wheel for something like this. <laughs> That's an amazing sketch. Well, thank you very much. So what I would imagine is some type of five point, but we're going to end up in this really skewed perspective because of the way that I drew it. So naturally, and then you don't end up with all five spokes because half of them are covered. And you just need to imply the area correctly. Right, right. And just a little bit of that undercut. You know, in case of something like this, I don't want to get over detailed because the more refined I try to make this rough sketch, the worse it'll look. So it's about evaluating where the sketch is in its life and kind of going, we need to keep it here on this planet and not try to over exceed it um, because trying to beautify this will actually show a lot more flaw. And um, seeing how badly you're doing something will just stress you out. <laughs> So keep it fun, keep it loose, and keep in mind as you're working the kind of stuff that you would change if you were um, if you were going to do a proper final on something like this. Because I've got a ton of stuff in mind. Actually, the design flow on this I absolutely love. I think this looks great. Um, and the perspective sort of works. Obviously, there's just general placements of stuff that I would change. And uh, but other than that, yeah, this is pretty cool. I like this idea a lot. Hope I can inspire somebody to wanna build something really really cool and then um, yeah from here I'm just kind of gonna bolt up some lines you know since we still got some viewers can't help but just keep on going yeah M. Willenberg says you're literally awesome well it's very kind of you to say so now I'm gonna take our previously mentioned standard BIC and I'm gonna go over some of these hard areas a little bit more and the reason I'm choosing this one to be a little bit firmer about this because the flow of the ink is a little bit bolder so yes this is big pens this is oh, this entire thing is big pens but you can tell right away that this will gives you these the, the boldness of the blue will go to black so quickly with these pens which is why I don't always sketch with them especially if I'm doing something that's a bit more exploratory like this um, because you'll end up with these dark lines that maybe you didn't want everywhere, maybe you did, who can really say for sure. Uh, but now that we're getting towards the end, we know what we want to keep. So not only have we done some line weight, now we're going to change the line contrast characteristics at the same time by going extra bold in, not everywhere at the same time. You know, we're just taking some of these lines and not necessarily making them bigger, just darker. And I did a pretty fair job with the last pen of giving myself lots of, like I made the lines fat enough that I can follow them pretty well um, without creating any new stray. And even I can use this stage to clean up some of the mistakes that I made because I'm taking, I'm taking the boldness to another stage at this point. Looking awesome, can't wait to see it rendered. Thank you so much. All right, so flip around, get the dashboard, lower glass. I tend not to detail all the areas in a sketch like this, again, because you just create these focal points of error. <laughs> so, you know, know what your limits are. Everything doesn't have to be sketched to death. This might seem like it's sketched to death. I don't know. <laughs> this is all the same to me. kind of want to line weight some of these ends a little bit. Another thing is this type of bic has a little bit more ink flow, which is good for this stage. Um, but it can get a little bit messy if if we're doing the entire sketch this way. Um, so this is kind of keeps things, this is a good process. Looks like something Porsche would build very natural looking in the way that it flows as well. Thank you very much. What's up, Cash Kills? So just bolding up some more lines here. And again, we're essentially working line weights. We're not doing anything different than what's there. We're just using one sketch to refine a lot more of these stages. Now you can do this, you know, you can keep doing underlays to tear this page out, put another page, put it underneath the page, and then uh, keep overlaying it until you get close to what you want. And some of them just require that anyways. It's just a part of the process. 
But if you can get a lot accomplished in the first sketch, man, does that save some time. Um, I wish I had an eye for this. <laughs> uh, just join. This is fantastic. Well, hey, what's up? I loved your 64C10. This one is amazing. Thank you so much. This one, actually, I probably enjoyed a little bit more than I thought that I was going to. I knew that I was probably going to end up doing a 911 because it was uh, the highest request that I got out of asking you guys yesterday. And something I knew I could do a, I don't want to say quick demo of, but something substantive. Um, but I didn't know what I was going to do design-wise. I had an idea about doing something mid-engine like this just for the sake of being extreme and sort of a little obtuse, I guess. <laughs> you know, rather than just drawing another 911, it's, I draw a lot of these. So, of course, the idea is let's, let's do something different than I would normally do so that you guys aren't bored to death. Just listen to somebody talk. Really isn't that interesting. Uh, McLaren F1 inspiration on the roof induction. Yes, indeed. And then hopefully when I'm done with this one, or what I'm going to call done here soon, the video you'll be able to go back and watch and, and see if you didn't catch how rough this was to start with. And this is still very rough. This is a pretty, pretty rough sketch, but it's not hateful. I don't hate it. But anyways, when you get to go back and rewatch the entire thing and just kind of see how the structure starts from complete basics and then comes up from there. And obviously there's a ton of room for improvement and there always, always is. But that's what these practice drawings are for, learning a process that makes sense to you so that you can get comfortable with that and, uh, and have repeated success in what you're doing. Guessing all the time is going to have <laughs> guessing effects. Guess better, you'll get better drawings. Love your videos, learn so much from watching. Thank you for checking it out, I really, really appreciate it. I've been wanting to do more of the instructional type videos for a while, just time hasn't allowed. It's a whole lot easier when I have help here versus me doing this by myself because I have to keep looking back and forth at the, um, at the phone because I want to be able to answer questions at the same time. Yeah, so it's a lot more fun and easy when my wife is here and she can help me answer all that stuff. But, um, but yeah, really, really enjoy doing these pieces and parts of the process in, in video so people can see that there's no, it's not rocket science to get to here in a way. That doesn't mean that it's necessarily easy, um, but it's not the most daunting thing. There's a lot harder things to draw. But if you have the basics of perspective, you can actually draw anything, I think. I think that's where people get hung up is figuring out how to use lines, basic lines, to draw contour. Where's the coffee? The coffee is right here, and surprisingly, I haven't drank much of it. I think my speech has slowed down from the beginning of the video to the end. Yes, coffee. You're doing very well. Thank you very, very much. All right, carrying on. It's going to mold up the end of the door handles here. And certainly, at any point, this gets really, really boring to watch these little pecked out details. Definitely let me know, and I'll end the video <laughs> and stop the suffering. So I like the idea of a little slide out window here. Kind of want to bold up these lines from the back so that they imply the direction that they're going from. A lot of this is completely intuitive, like something I've done a million times. I'm going to be able to do relatively well. Uh, man, so punchy. <laughs> have a nice coffee. I will. I'm going to have to heat that thing up when, I, uh, when I'm done here. Or just go out for a fresh one. It's a nice day outside when we go for a drive. And uh, generally, I don't want to get too overdialed with details, um, but I want for this to be as complete a video as possible. You might also notice that the line weights I have heavier towards the back than the front, and that also is a way to imply perspective. If you you kind of create a focal point with line work, um, and that's kind of cool. So not everything has to be an equal amount of bold, I guess is the, what I'm trying to say here. And hopefully you guys won't get motion sickness while I'm throwing this page around. Again, I'm being selective about what I'm line waiting so that, you know, should I do a full render or something of this particular sketch that, um, Obviously, I know my own process, so I can look back at this sketch and go, okay, this is, this is what I was after when I did this. 
versus handing this off to somebody and hoping they understand what I'm doing. Which color will you pick for this? I don't, I'm certainly not going to get into color render on this one um, in this particular video. I want this one to just be about sketching. But uh, maybe, maybe next week or something I can do another live video and we can do a full render with this one and I can show what I might have changed in the process. But for now, yeah, just going to keep this one about pen sketching. Because it is honestly the thing I get asked about the most. I don't know if it's because people are surprised that I just sketch in pen or what. And you might not be able to see, but I've got a napkin here and I'm basically rolling the pen after a lot of these little strokes. The reason being when you're working really quickly like this, you're heating up the metal in the pen and the ink will flow really quickly and you'll get these blobs in your drawing. And that's not so bad, but then when your hand rolls over it, you contaminate the backside of your hand and then you smear ink everywhere. So just out of habit, I always dab the edge of the pen off just to keep things as clean as possible for what it is. So again, just flipping around and creating a nice little flow here. It's basically like a happy little spoiler as they say. And I made such a mess with sketch details back here, it's probably a good thing that I end up with something a little bit more bold off the back so that, uh... Alright. <laughs> that was killing me to find out what's... Sorry, the Roy effect. Which thing was that? Oh, why I was um, off screen doing this every two seconds. It just becomes habit. Kind of like, uh... Airbrushing, you get in the habit of removing paint off the needle every two seconds. It just becomes habit. Surprised nobody's asking me why I'm drawing in blue versus any other color. <laughs> you can draw it in any color. But I just like the way that blue looks. Especially because we get these really cool color dynamics going from a light blue to this almost black blue. So there's a little bit more motion in the sketch just by virtue of sketching in blue. It's kind of cool. Greetings from Guatemala. You're crazy, boo, bro. <laughs> What's up? How's it going? Was blue on sale? Now, why would you hurt me with a question like that? No, it's not on sale. <laughs> All these pens cost the same amount of 99 cents. It felt like a very personal attack. Anyways, all right, so I'm just going to finish up the back end basic details here. There's nothing, nothing going to be too crazy. I do want to have a little bit of line weight variation in here and maybe some highlight details just for the sake of being interesting. Big pens are the best. Hi, Burke's Nest. <laughs> John's 997. Just kidding. No, no, man. It's cool. I understand. We've all been there. I'm just kind of plotting in some basic detail lines. I like to have a few just basic sketch lines in as well, just to create some variation. Because if everything is big, bold lines, then nothing is big, bold lines. Do you do commissions? Would love to get one done in my car. I do indeed, um, but we are incredibly busy at the moment, so I don't know when we're going to have space for new stuff in a little while. All right, just going to get a little bit of boldness in the exhaust detail here. I have a few different ideas of where this could go um, if I were to move it around, but I don't hate this. It's not bad. And then we'll just start to bold up the edges around the transmission here. Looking mighty fine. Thank you. I really enjoy watching your process. Thank you. I had always secretly worried that watching drawing would be a lot like watching paint dry, and in some ways, that's absolutely true. You know, but you never know. Um, I know that I learned a lot by watching other people draw and seeing artwork that I really, really liked. So that made me want to do more of these videos more often. I just don't always have the time for them. I'm just going to put a little bit of ink tone in the exhaust area and say, like, that vent area just because later on, if I'm going to re-sketch this, I'll have an idea of what my depth points are. Sketch in that rain light. And then, when will it finish? Thank you, Cash Kills! I'm almost done, actually, or at least, I mean, 
you know, sketching is one of those things where you can basically work forever, but it kind of would defeat the purpose <laughs> if I just kept on working. It's not really a sketch at that point. If I'm going to work on it forever, then it's what I'm doing today. And I don't necessarily want that either. I'm almost done. Or at least what I would consider done, almost done for this type of drawing. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about stuff. Just kind of want to bold up some of my reflection lines here. Again, so if I'm going to render this later, I know what these shapes are intended to do. So I kind of have a, a gloss flow of where all these pieces and parts would go. What's up? Do you go back and rework your old stuff often? Sometimes. I don't... Um... Yeah, sometimes. Um, the issue I found with that is drawings that I did like last year aren't really that good compared to this year or whatever. So some, some of them would take an, a lot more reworking than I would like. But sometimes, every now and then, I dig stuff up and I'm like, man, that was sort of cool or had a cool basic idea. But, um, but hopefully we're always getting better at what we're doing, not worse. So I like to think, in a lot of ways, if I've got a decent idea about something, I still think it's faster just to redraw it. Um, but I'm a little bit of a weirdo in that way. <laughs> if my internet can just hang on for a little bit longer. Do you keep all your sketches such as this? Um, I sell a lot of these, actually, strangely enough. Uh, which to me is sort of surprising, but you know whatever whatever I don't sell, I usually hang on to until I get tired of hanging on to them. Um, but I like having sketches like this. Um, you know, it's always cool when somebody wants to buy something like this uh, because a full render doesn't have the same type of look and soul as something like this. So this is cool in a much different way than a full render is. But I hang on to a lot of these. They don't really take up much space. I just kind of hang on to the sketchbook and take these with me when I fly. Um, and sometimes just going back and looking at them is kind of a cool walk through memory lane, you know, to see what I was drawing or the kind of stuff I was designing at the time. It's got a really cool look to it. <laughs> Pretty stoked on this one for a for a rough sketch and a demo. Not all, oftentimes these demo sketches can, they're a little bit rougher. You all tend to try to move through something really, really quickly. And I think we're like an hour and 15 in, which isn't, isn't too bad. Uh, hopefully you guys aren't bored to death. But we are almost to a good stopping point. Leave that one there, and actually, I feel like this guy needs just a little bit of tread detail to be slightly more interesting than it is. And yeah, and then we can all finally move on with our day, and I can get some fresh coffee. Will you ever draw a Miata? I've drawn Miatas before. I've actually got a Miata project here that I'm working on now. I don't really think there's stuff that I wouldn't draw, honestly. You know, just some uh, some projects have a little bit more appeal than others. It's, Basically, reality of that, but that's all. All right, so let's see if I was gonna sketch in a little bit of light tread here. I don't want to get too carried away because I'm kind of imagining like a like a Toyo. But sometimes tread can just—it's a cool detail that shouldn't be overlooked. That you can just add a little bit of something. Also, it adds a, a little bit of a shape to the tire as well. Just a cool detail to waste time on in a warm-up sketch. <laughs> you know what? Just a little bit to the front as well. Yeah, nothing too crazy. And really, I think that sets us for this one. I feel really good about where we got. So... So... Thank you guys so much for coming by to check this out. I really, really appreciate it. I'll probably post a short video of some of the top ups I'll do on this one, and I'll share a full shot in the stories. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. You guys have a great day.